What's going on everybody? I'm Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and today we're back in the shop working on the Predator 670. Last week's episode, you saw that we ran into a couple of uh, small snafus, we were missing some parts. But anyways, we've obtained those parts, and we're going to get into it in a minute. I'm going to show you what we've done different since I saw you last time. I'm going to start from the top of the motor, and I'm going to work my way down and show you what I've done different since last week. So the very first thing I did was I, on this cover, on, this, on the flywheel cover, fan cover, fan shroud. I, I trimmed off all the pieces that used to support the old uh, air box. That's the first thing. Second thing I did was in here, if you can see down there in the engine valley where my finger is. I'll put, I'll put, a, I'll put a couple pictures, but anyways. That was the uh, pulse pump reference or the suction for the pulse pump. And so I just took that fitting and said I couldn't find what thread pitch that was, probably metric. And uh, I took that fitting and I, I cut it off with a, with a, I cut the nipple off of it and I cut the top off of it and I just filled the cavity with JB Weld, let it cure, I put it back in there with some a little bit of RTV on the threads. So that, that worked out great. The next thing I did was I drilled a hole in this brand new air filter right here and I got this plastic 90 degree fitting. It's, a, it's got a three quarter inch, it's got a three quarter inch threaded base pipe thread and it's got... Um, like I said, it's 90 degrees of plastic and it, it was able to meet up nicely with this positive crankcase ventilation hose right there. Another thing I did was I, I put this wire on here for future for the tachometer. Now I'll put a couple pictures in the, uh, I'll put a couple, a couple pictures in, I took some pictures, I'm not going to film all that. But this goes to the, to the, to where the kill wire goes on the coil. I put it on this, if you're looking out here, I put it on the right side coil. I soldered it on underneath the, um, the insulation to the actual, right to the base of that stake on that, go, that goes on the coil. So that's going to be for my tachometer. Um, we put the starter back on. Let's see, what else did I do? Put the oil cooler back on, and I'll show you on the tractor over there in a little bit where I had the clearance for this bottom hose. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the uh, shims. And I did get from performance, uh, from yeah, performance 670. I got the uh, the RTV and the the gasket replacement kit, the the gasket delete kit for this cover. So give me a minute, well, I'll show you how we're going to put that on. What this kit provides is two shims: one for the camshaft, one for the crankshaft. These are the stock ones, right here. And my micrometer is the batteries are dead in it, so I couldn't mic it to see what the thicknesses are and the difference is, but it appears that the new ones are either you know what, I don't know. As long as it works, I don't care. So those are the stock ones. These are the ones for performance 670. And what they do is they make up the difference between the, the gasket that's on here and when you use this RTV stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some acetone, we're going to wipe down the mating surfaces on here and here, we're going to make sure all the old material's off, we're going to clean it good, and we're going to bolt it back on. And uh, when we bolt it back on, when we're ready, we're going to read the instructions on this stuff. It's probably some kind of setup time. So whenever we're ready with that, we'll be back. The directions say to put it on one surface, which I did. You can see I put it on everything, around every bolt hole. And I especially made sure that I got it around the oil, the pressurized oil holes. They're right there and there. So, it's on one surface. I just got done doing that. I made about an eighth of an inch bead. It says eighth to a quarter. I went with an eighth on this one by eyeball, no measurements. But what I'm going to do, I got my shims on there. I put a little bit of Lucas oil on this. I put a little bit of Lucas down in the cam where the camshaft rides. And that's it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put this cover back on and it says to finger tighten the bolts until the material starts to ooze out. I've done this on other stuff, I know what they're talking about. So you want to finger tighten the bolts and then, you got to, and then you have to let it set up for an hour. After an hour it's cured, or, or it's curing, then you tighten, you, you torque your bolts. And I, I think in this case it's 16 foot pounds. So we're going to get to it, we'll be back. We got the cover back on. We got all the bolts. I, I couldn't make them finger tight because there's dowels on, on this and it has to sit, seat and there's a, the oil pump gear and all that stuff. So I did use my 10 millimeter quarter inch, but I just, I just touched it until it was all on. 
you can, you can get in here and you can see the, the gasket maker has pushed out from between the mating surfaces as the directions say but by no means are any of these tight they're just I can unscrew them with my fingers so we're gonna go ahead and let this cure it happens to be 1235 on the clock at about 135 140 ish we'll come back in here we'll, we'll torque them to 16 foot pounds and I think that's gonna basically complete the modifications for this engine for now and uh, we're gonna go ahead and regroup we're gonna go have some lunch and we'll see you soon. While that RTV is setting up over there, let me take you back over to the tractor and I'll show you a couple things we've done to it recently. Last episode, you saw that we took all these, all these uh, fabricated pieces out of the tractor and we painted them, made a couple small modifications. Well, I reinstalled them this morning and I also made another couple of small modifications. First is this spring right here. Now that spring goes on the, uh, the old parking brake that locks the clutch pedal out. So up is disengaged, down is engaged. So when it's up, it could, this thing is going to be bouncing around. You know, when I'm driving, it's going to be going a lot faster than it ever could before. So this little engage, this little parking, uh, parking brake, uh, whatever it's called, <laughs> that thing could inadvertently like bounce on some bumps get locked down so when I push the clutch pedal in what will happen is it'll get stuck it'll lock so put a spring on it it holds it nicely in place and that's the first mod be right back another modification I made to the to the uh, idler pulleys I did it last before last episode I just failed to mention it so it's a pretty cool modification in my opinion and it's very useful so if looking here so if you notice on the shaft right here, there's a bolt. That's a 5 16 uh, I believe it's 14, bolt that I threaded. I, I drilled and tapped into this idler pulley shaft it's because this is a shaft collar and so is the other side. The other one's welded now as we went over last week. But this one here is a shaft collar and these things are, are great. But when you tighten up that little set screw on them, they tend to twist little bit and also I'd have to take a pair of channel locks or something and squeeze this shaft collar up against to pinch this pulley in between it tighter and try to tighten up that allen screw so I just went ahead and drilled into the shaft I tapped it that way I put a washer and the shaft is just I ground it down till it's just below the surface of where the shaft collar surface is so now when I tighten up that bolt it put it evenly compresses the bearing in the middle of this idler pulley and then after that, after that bolt's tight I can go ahead and tighten down my allen screw just for double safety measures and this thing ain't going nowhere I also did it on this one come over here and look this is the clutch idler and I put a quarter twenty right in here I tap, that's a five eighths shaft on this idler so that's same, same, uh, same principle. I tap that out to quarter twenty. That way, I can tighten up the shaft collar, and there's no play, no play in these, in these, in these pulleys at all. They roll nice and smooth. And uh, I'll be right back. So another modification I made yesterday. Well, not a modification. It's more of a repair. But if you recall, back in like the, the episode where I, where I fit the engine in here and made this engine plate, I had to notch. This, this, this circumference, this, this half circle shape right here is where the crankcase of the engine sat down. Now it's like that from factory. The old Kohler motor sat down in here. <coughs> Excuse me. And when I, when I had the Predator going in here, I wanted it to sit perfect in the, inside this engine cradle. This engine cradle doubles as the frame rail. This is the frame. And so to get all the clearance I needed this way to make the motor set over as far as possible I had to end up cutting some U notches in here you can still see them they're still there and that what that did was let me push the crankcase the, the engine cowl over all the way so the bolts that hold it on could have a a relief to go into and that got me my my, my spacing so I could line up with the transmission pulley now being a part of the frame and having those big notches in it 
I don't know how much I weakened it. I mean, it's quarter inch. It's 3 16 or quarter inch. It's pretty thick stuff. But I wasn't happy with that. So I took a piece of uh, eighth inch steel bar, bar stock, and I cut it out to fit so it would completely cover those recesses that I cut, those reliefs I cut into it. And then I welded all the way around it. So the reliefs are still there. Those, those bolts on the cowling can fit in still. And I also, those used to be those, those dome bolts, the safety nuts. I cut those off and I, well, I got rid of those. I put on regular 10 millimeter nuts and then I ground those down all the way until I can still get a socket on them. And that's what they are. They're just, they're just basically flattened out. I'm not going to be able to take off the cowling while the engine's in the tractor. Oh well. It's just the way it is on this thing. But I reinforced the frame. So let me uh, think about it, what I did next, and I'll be right back. Another thing I did was I cut a relief right here in this, this, uh, this cross member. I cut a relief right here where I'm touching and this, this U-shaped notch. That's for the oil cooler on the engine. So the engine sits down in here and the nipple for the oil cooler used to sit just above this. It used to be, it used to keep, it used to carry on this way. And there was just a couple of half circles for the old engine mounts or whatever. I cut this out. I drilled this also, this, this, ver this uh, vertical member. And now there should be plenty of room for the oil line to come and the hose to come back up and go to the oil cooler. So that's clearanced. Let me show you the next thing. The last thing I did this morning was I changed out the bolts that hold the clutch mechanism in. I took out, they were, they were uh, hex head bolts before, 3A16, and I took a 3 quarter inch drill bit and I drilled, a, I drilled out over top of the 3 8 holes that were here and I put countersunk 3 8 bolts in here. Now, didn't have to do that looking back because after the, the shift quadrant sits in here, just like so. It sits just like that. I would have had room for the bolts for the to be underneath this, but anyway, it looks a little cleaner. So I did that. I, I countersunk it, and it's all bolted in. It's a done deal. The last thing we did was I gave we wiped out, we wiped everything down, um, ground things down where needed, and we painted everything with a with a coat of flat black. Not the entire thing, but just everywhere we've been working and where there was paint missing so we could weld and this and that. So right now, currently, all the pieces and parts and everything else that need to be painted are painted. The engine plate's painted, and I'm hoping that when I put that motor back in here, that's going to be it for a, for a while. Okay, so one more modification, and it's a small one, that I'm going to make to the motor is that when this motor's in the tractor, there's, there's an oil drain, as you can see right here. There's an oil drain on each side. Now that happens to be a, uh, a number 10 metric thread and it's a 1.5 inch uh, thread pitch, 1.5 millimeter thread pitch. So it's a number 10 by 1.5. Now I can't get to these and not only can I not really get to them while it's in the tractor, I mean I can get to them but if I unscrew them to drain the oil, what's gonna happen is the oil is just gonna go all over the engine plate and drip down and it's gonna be everywhere. So I can't change the oil without pulling the motor. What I'm going to do is I, I ordered the parts. I've got a uh, number 10 by 1.5 metric uh, bung. I've got a straight one coming and I've got a 90 degree swivel one coming. I'm leaning on the straight one because the swivel one probably just has more, more chance that it's going to sit there and vibrate or whatever over time. I don't know. I don't know how tough they are. But I don't want it to ever leak. So I'm hoping that, the, that it's, it's a... It's the metric thread and it goes to a 3 8 bung for a hose. And um, hopefully that's, that bung doesn't stick out too far. I've got about two and a half inches. On the, I'm gonna be putting it on the back side of the motor facing the, facing the driver's seat. That's the best place for it. So hopefully that has enough room to come out of the motor when it's threaded in and I can get a 3 8 hose on it. And it can make a 90 degree turn. It'll stick out the side of the engine plate and I'll have another um, bung on it with a cap. That way when I change the oil, I can take that cap off, let it drain into a bucket or whatever, put it back on. So that's one mod that I'm going to be coming up here in the future. The parts are ordered, I just don't have them yet. The next thing we're going to start looking at, start figuring out how we're going to get mounted is the brakes. Now, the last episode, or the one before when we talked about all the new parts, that was last week, this was still coming in the mail. We talked about how the other brakes I got from uh, BMI carts weren't going to work because they have that bolt-on central hub. This is the one I got from Go Power Sports, and it has a one-inch keyed 
welded on hub and it fits right here. Actually fits on here real nice. This, this brake shaft already has a key in it from the factory. So just fits over there just like that. Perfect. Then this is my caliper. And it does not, it will not fit anywhere else, guys. I will, it's, not, it's wider than I thought it was going to be, but that doesn't matter. It's all good. It's going to be up here. It's where it's going to be mounted. I don't really mind this brake caliper being here because the transmission's already right here. It's up. It's above the bottom of the transmission. It's above the bottom of the brake rotor. And it, it's too wide. It's three and a quarter inches wide, I believe. And there's nowhere else above it between the frame and the transmission that this thing's going to fit. And the bleeder, the bleeder valves need to, be, need to be the highest point. So when this thing's sitting right here, they'll be at the highest point. I'll be able to bleed it. The brake lines, I got 90 degree fittings to come off of here. And the brake lines are just going to turn immediately and go this way across. Probably up into here. Might have to drill some holes in the frame. I don't. I don't know. We're gonna. We're gonna figure that out after the fact. But or the brake lines can can go can go. I can turn these so they're facing up. I can go straight up into the hollow part of the frame here, and then come up in this area where nothing else is. The belt system's all the way over here. I have this area, and then I can. The brake's gonna be on the right side of the tractor. So I got options. So the brake caliper is gonna live here, and uh, we're gonna figure out how to get this thing mounted. We'll be back. So we got the tire pulled off for better access. You can see our, our brake rotor right here. We got plenty of clearance by the axle. And I went ahead and I made up this little jig right here with the air compressor so that I could, you see that? I can close the, close the caliper. Because what's going on is I need to know exactly how this is going to be orientated on here when this thing squeezed so right there it's clamped and it's leaking out of there it don't matter because my plan is to make a bracket a piece of steel plate probably three eighths to come off the bolt to bolt to the frame and bolt to this caliper and I need to know that the frame is parallel with the caliper, if that makes sense. Because I want this thing, when it squeezes down, I want it to squeeze down evenly on the rotor. Now put that straight edge up on there, let's see. Yeah, that's going to work out pretty good. It's, it's basically, it needs to be shimmed up at the top. But come on in here and take a look. It's basically flush with the, it's got a touch, a touch of space up at the top, if you can see. And we're clamped on the rotor, you can see that. So we're going to go with that, guys. We're going to go ahead and clamp a piece of, we're going to bolt a piece of 3 8 We're going to put that piece of 3 8 We're going to, we're going to put it on there. Once it's, once it's on here, we're going to bolt it, probably four bolts. It's going to come down here and there's two bolts that through bolt this thing. Like that. We found our piece of steel. This is some structural steel, some job site I was on that I found. It's three eighths of an inch thick. It's pretty heavy. We're gonna go ahead and figure out what dimensions we need to cut. And we will see you soon. All right guys, let's get to cutting. saw motion. It's because I've been using sawzalls for a real long time and I learned a long time ago that you can extend the life of your blades by moving them around on the workpiece because if you just let it, if you push up against the guard and just let it cut in one spot, it'll wear these teeth out right here and you still have brand new teeth up here. That ain't no good. So, when possible, move it around. 
around. We'll be back. I got caught up doing the brakes and getting all crazy about that, and I forgot to torque my cover. I'm about an hour late from the hour it was supposed to set up. So now I got my inch pounds wrench. So I did a little online thing, and that um, 16 foot pounds apparently translates into 192 inch pounds. That's what it's set for. I'm not playing with that. That's playing with fire right there, boy. I'm gonna have I'm gonna need a second opinion. I'm not cranking that down. It hasn't clicked yet, and that's doesn't seem right. But oh it just it just went. There it went. Let me get this one over here. Okay, maybe that is right. Okay. The last thing I need is to break bolts off in a brand new engine or strip them out. Okay, it's, it's, it's given. It just gave. Okay, okay, it's doing it. Click, click, click. All the clicks. I don't like that one. I don't think I'm going to push that one any further. But dude, these are all, these are all clickety clacky. Click, click, click. 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 Go back to this one. Okay, they all clicked. So the RTV that was sticking out that came out from between the, the seams, it's still tacky, so I think we're good. Let's get back to the brakes. We got the, uh, the plate mounted on here. We had the brake caliper um, the brake caliper on there mocked up, clamped. And so we got we figured I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that off at like a 45 bevel right there. We got our bolt holes where I want my bolts to go through to the frame. And we're gonna take this thing over to the bench, we're gonna cut it out, clean it up, paint it, put it back on, drill through for the brake bolts. See you in a minute. We got the steel plate cut out. I got the holes marked and drilled. Now I've got it clamped to where I want it on the frame. And we're, it's, it's basically gonna self jig now. I already got one bolt drilled, 3A16. It's in there, it's tight. I got three more to drill. And that's how we're doing. We got two more to drill after this, we'll be back. We got the, the brake bracket drilled out. We, got, we, we bolted it to the frame. I put the caliper in place. I used the air compressor to clamp the, the pistons down over the rotor. I got this exactly where I wanted it. I drilled my first hole. Well, I, I marked it on this plate. We took this plate back off, drilled through. I put this four inch bolt through. We put it back on with one. And I had to rotate it just a touch to get it right where I wanted it so the pads were on the same arc as the rotor. We got full engagement on the pads. The disc is not rubbing on the caliper. Everything looks great. I clamped this down. We just unbolted it off the mower. We brought it back over here. This is the last hole we got to drill. And this thing will be, once it's bolted back on there with these two bolts and those four to the frame, our caliper is going to be done. So we're going to go ahead and drill this out. See you in a minute. We got it all mounted up, guys. Check it out. Caliper firmly mounted to the frame via a 3 8 plate. We gave it a little black spritz. Here's your rotor. Stefan, give me some pressure. Just a little tiny bit. All right, come over here and look down in here. As you can see right there, it's clamped. Release pressure. There we go. And the beauty with these, uh, with these calipers here from uh, MCP is that I thought it was two different chambers where the, where, the, where the brake fluid would go into this side and this side, but both of these are interconnected. There's a, there's a passageway for because I only have, I have one of these, one of these airlines is just blocked off with some electric tape, and the other one's hooked up to the air compressor, and it actuates both pistons at the same time. So it's all good. When it's hooked up to the caliper, I mean to the master cylinder, it's going to have two hoses. 
and it's gonna and each each um each pad each piston can move independently of the other. So I've actually because of the keyway on this shaft, I've got it I've got it favored over to I've got the the rotor favored over to that side of the caliper so that we get more keyway engagement. But otherwise, guys, there it is. Have a look. That's an MCP brake caliper mounted to a Peerless uh, 2300 with a Go Power Sports six inch rotor on a one inch shaft keyway. We're one step closer to getting this thing driving around on its own power. So, as you can see, there it is. We got the tire back on. That's the BMI uh, Carts MCP brake caliper mounted ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do, and not in this video, is we got to figure out how to mount the master cylinder. And this is going to require putting the, uh, the seat pan back on this thing. It's definitely going to be a little bit of modifications to that. We're going to might have to cut some of that floor plate off to make room for the pedals. I don't know. We'll see. But i got to mount that master cylinder somewhere back in here on the frame. And the pedal is going to pull, going to, is going to pull the lever on it and push the plunger in to pump fluid into that. So that's the next video. Anyways, give me a minute and we got one more thing before we close out. I put this marker board up in the shop uh, several weeks ago and uh, I think we can start crossing some of this stuff off, uh, off. This is what's left to do. So, idler pulley reinforcement on the shafts. Well, we did that and then some. Crossed that off. Spring for clutch lockout. We did that. Clearance for shift quadrant. We did that. Idler pulley belt keeps. That belt ain't going nowhere. Reinforced belt brake bracket. That piece bolts to the frame is just a piece of eighth inch bar stock by inch and a half wide bent over in a 90 degree. I do need to reinforce that with a gusset. I haven't done that yet. McCuny carb kit. I scored that and we got it on the motor. So, bam. And that was 360 bucks, I think. Hydraulic disc brake kit, BMI carts. We got that. That's done. Oil cooler clearance for the oil line. We did that and we got the oil cooler mounted back on the motor. Done. We needed to get a gas and a brake pedal. I think I got the ones we need. So we got that. We still need to mount them though. Um, so that was to do, uh, you know, priority. I still need to do engine. We need, we need to do the wiring. I need, I'm going to use the stock gas tank, so we need to get the gas tank's clean. I just need to get fittings and the hoses and mount the fuel pump. Haven't done that. I do want to put an alternator on this thing, and I've, I've, I've been, uh, I got my eye on one. So a nice small one that will fit in the front. So that all, I haven't done that yet. Bumper, winch, this stuff's way out, guys. Lights, Nerf bars, uh, tree kickers, all that good stuff. Luggage racks, um, new tires and rims. That's going to be pricey. Way, way later to do. Front custom axle. That's coming. Maybe um, independent suspension. I don't know. We're going to find that out after. That's way in the future. After we get this thing running and driving around on its own. So, and then rack and pinion steering. So, uh, with that, let's get this thing closed out. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy the content. I hope you're keeping up along with this build. We got a lot more to come. My name's Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and we'll see you next time.